Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Pierce. I'm a uh, senior um, uh, systems engineer at VMware in a network and security business unit. And as you can uh, tell, uh, I don't have an American accent. I actually live in the UK. Uh, and I look after the most, or the largest and most strategic customers to VMware uh, across EMEA, uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Um, so the session today is targeted at, targeted at uh, end users and potential end users of OpenStack. Okay, um, and the aim of the session is to actually really highlight to everyone here that. Um, OpenStack and VMware can coexist on the same platform at the same time. Yeah. So um, without further ado, let's get cracking. So let me ask you one quick question. When you get a request in that says, OK, we need to provide a, an OpenStack platform, who's that coming from? Who do you see that coming from? And that's to anyone that's willing to answer. Anyone? Okay. Okay, spot on. So whether, in, whether you're in uh, North America or whether you're in uh, Europe, it's exactly the same, okay? It's the development teams that are actually wanting that OpenStack platform. It's not the operations teams. Okay, so if you um, uh, uh, think about it, do your developers and your development teams want to actually run and manage the actual infrastructure that is providing that OpenStack platform? Generally, the answer is no in Europe, and it's exactly the same here, okay? Unless you're a, a mega cloud provider, okay? So that's, you know, it, it's common across the, uh, the globe. So what I actually hear from my customers is the developers want, or the value of OpenStack is the, that open, API, yeah, that open standard API, whether that whether it's called DefCore today or this week, Interop, yeah, powered by, yeah, whatever you want to call it, that open API where they can take their you know Terraform templates, their uh, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, Heat templates, whatever. They want to take that that same template and deploy it on um, you know, one of the sixteen vendors that you saw on stage on Tuesday. Yeah, VMware being one. Okay, so that's where the big value is. Yeah, in OpenStack. Yeah, it's not about infrastructure management because that's been done for many many years. The value in OpenStack is on the open API. Okay, so so if you've got a common infrastructure already why not run OpenStack on that existing infrastructure, okay, and make your life really, really easy, okay? So rather than having to, you know, pr provision a whole new platform, yeah, both uh, compute, storage, networking, yeah, for this new platform, why not just use your existing platform that you've got in place? Uh, and that's what a lot of customers do. So. Um, for example, yeah, if you've got a vSphere environment, you can actually run it. Yeah? Okay, so one common misconception that is out there in the OpenStack community is that you can't run OpenStack on vSphere. Okay? Yes, you can. And every large, significant commercial distribution of OpenStack provides support for running OpenStack on vSphere. Okay? They might not tell you, but it's actually in there. Okay. So, uh, so this is a very high-level software-defined data center design. Okay. And this is probably running in your data centers today. Okay. Yeah, where you have uh, management clusters. You have and you have compute clusters, okay? Okay, that's probably running in your. You know, if you're running vSphere, this is probably how it's configured. So if you've got that infrastructure in place already, 
it's very, very easy to deploy OpenStack. Okay? So, all you need to do is download the OVA, install the OVA on vCenter, and have one dedicated compute cluster. Okay? And that can be just a simple two node cluster. Yeah, you can even run it on one node. But you know, the whole premise about VMware integrated OpenStack is that it is a production grade OpenStack distribution. So everything that we want you to do is actually to provide a solution that is going to be uh, production grade and production ready. Okay. So that is realistically the requirements for VIO. It's, it's straightforward, it's easy, and it's uh, uh, really, really straightforward. So, in summary, yeah, because remember this is only a 10 minute session and before I, they turn me off. Um, so, in summary, yeah, um, let me just have a quick look. You get the APIs that your developers want, that open, that open standard API, okay? But you're running it on infrastructure that your operations teams know and trust, and they have their operation tools yeah, available, and nothing's changed. So they're managing that cloud infrastructure in exactly the same way that they're managing today. Okay? You, inc you can increase your return on investment, yeah, uh, your total cost of ownership, and your time to market simply because you don't have to invest in training and skilling up your whole operations teams. Okay? Um, and as I've already said, um, yeah, VIO provides those, um, uh, those, those APIs that, you know, in my mind, are the, the value of OpenStack. Okay? So, it's easy to install, yeah? There's a blog there, there's a YouTube video um, that actually mentions that, well, you, know, you can actually, how quickly can you actually deploy it in 30 minutes? Some people can actually do it in 15 minutes, okay? So that's how easy it can be. Don't think that OpenStack is really, really complex, yeah, because VMware's taken that complexity out of providing that solution, okay? Just to give your developers that API that they want. Um, yeah, and we provide a very easy upgrade path from Kilo to Mataka, from Mataka to um, uh, Akata. Okay, so just like many uh, commercial distributions, uh, we actually tend to skip one release. Yeah, okay, so and we continue to do that. Um, um, so, yeah. Um, one thing that VIO can do with the uh, uh, with um, uh, NSX is that we can actually really enhance your network security of your OpenStack deployment. So uh, we, we can do micro segmentation, but we can actually ensure that the traffic between uh, multiple VMs in your OpenStack deployment actually have deep packet inspection between them. And that's using uh, service insertion with NSX. Okay. Um, yeah. So I've already mentioned that we uh, uh, skip a release, but, and our forthcoming release of VIO will be uh, based on Akata. Okay. So something you know, to really take note of is the amount of free training that we give out now. So for those people that aren't aware, uh, VMware has a free lab training guide facility called Hands on Labs. Okay, it's free. It's free to register. You just register and you get an environment up and running, which is yours, and it will get deployed in around about, around about five minutes. Okay, and you can extend it up to eight hours. Okay, and you can run that platform and that tool as many times as you like. Okay, and there's the, the, um, the URLs to it, and it actually has a, the docs link actually has a, um, um, uh, a guide that you can really follow and use it as a training manual, okay? Um, so, 
We also have a blog set of blog posts that you can follow. And um, if you go down, downstairs to the marketplace, you can actually, uh, we'll be giving away some freebies. Okay. Uh, and tell them that I sent you. Okay. Um, but remember, okay, firmware, yeah, um, you know, speak to your account managers or your account uh, representatives or your partner representatives to find out more. Okay. And uh, with that, I'm done. So I think I've probably got around about 30 seconds to, uh, for you to ask any questions. Any questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time.